Hello, my soccer universe. Let's do this uh, uh, final look before the international break on how things are in the leagues. And I'm going to do it now uh, in the order that I have it here on my app, actually, although this is not the order I usually do, but you know, just to change things up. And we start here in Germany, um, where we had the following results uh, the Saturday results we already knew, I will just add the Sunday. Uh, so Saturday we had uh, Friday with Gladbach, Freiburg 1-1, then uh, Saturday Schalke uh, losing at home to Leipzig 0-1, uh, uh, Stuttgart at home to Hoffenheim 1-1, uh, Augsburg big win over Hannover 3-1, Wolfsburg 5-2 over Düsseldorf, Hertha uh, loses at home to Dortmund 2-3, where we said that uh, Dortmund at least for a day is taking the lead. Uh, Leverkusen loses at home to Werder Bremen 3-1 and then uh, Eintracht Frankfurt uh, wins Nuremberg 1-0 so that's the second Sunday game and then of course Bayern Munich as we already said uh, beats Mainz 6-0 so the distance that Bayern is putting between themselves and Dortmund even got bigger because goal differential now they have five more goals added and that could be a huge factor. So we have uh, Bayern Munich and Dortmund level on points, but Bayern with the far superior goal differential. Well, actually, it's not that far superior. If you look, if, if you look at it, it's 68 uh, for versus 27 against, and 64 for and 30 against for uh, Dortmund. So it doesn't look that bad. Um, Champions League spot Leipzig 49, Gladbach 40, 47, and it's kind of tight because Frankfurt has 46 in fifth, and Leverkusen. And Wolfsburg sit on 42, 6th and 7th. Uh, Werder now overtakes Hoffenheim, uh, 39 points to 38 points. And then in the bottom half of the table, we have Hertha at 35, uh, Freiburg. This is the, I think Hertha now joins this uh, junk of teams that have very have no, nowhere to go in a way. They cannot really go to the European spots, they are also going to be relegated. Um, so this is Hertha 35, uh, Freiburg 31, Düsseldorf 31, Mainz 30. Uh, relegation zone, Augsburg with a huge win uh, overtakes on Schalke, so 25 uh, for Augsburg, only 23 for Schalke, and that's only three points behind, uh, ahead of Stuttgart, behind. Uh, who are in the relegation spot. So it's going to be tight for Schalke. Uh, Hannover 14, Nuremberg 13 rounds out uh, the relegation zone. Uh, England was kind of a weird uh, match day because many games have been postponed due to the FA Cup. Uh, we had Bournemouth, Newcastle 2-2. Uh, then we had only Burnley, Leicester 1-2. Uh, West Ham 4-3 against Huddersfield. Again, Huddersfield had a 3-1 lead. And then the Sunday games, we I talked extensively about Liverpool and Fulham 2-1. Uh, Ed Graham Cottage, so I should probably reverse that one. Fulham Liverpool 1-2. And we had Everton Chelsea 2-0. Uh, that was a big stunner. And we have two games. Uh, nah. <laughs> uh, we, I already know that we already know the dates. Uh, about uh, Spurs Palace and the Manchester Derbies on the 24th of April, which should have happened this week, but since both were in the FA Cup, um, that did not happen yet. Um, Liverpool, at the moment, two points ahead of Manchester City. However, Manchester City has a game in hand. Uh, then uh, not much change because neither Arsenal nor United played but uh, Chelsea has now lost but it's, but it's level uh, on games with the um, with the others so they're all on 30 uh, games and Chelsea is only in six spots with 57 so Arsenal 60 58 for United 57 for Chelsea and 61 for Spurs these are the ones that uh, go for the last two Champions League spots and will probably be in Europe then um, Really, not that many changes. I mean, uh, we're looking here through through all the results. Not much has changed. Um, so, if I look here at the bottom half, Everton it moves up slightly uh, to its Leicester, uh, but Leicester also won. Uh, West Ham won. 
Newcastle, uh, yeah, if I look at the relegation zone, it surely starts at Southampton, and I think Newcastle, Crystal Palace, and Brighton might get sucked into it. Uh, but you know, Newcastle is not two games ahead of Brighton, so um, it's not quite sure. It's a very uneven picture. Quickly speaking of the FA Cup, um, the quarterfinals were, of course, Watford, uh, Crystal Palace 2 1, Swansea, uh, Manchester City 2 3. Wolverhampton uh, Wanderers against Manchester United 2-1 and then the Millwall uh, Brighton game 2-2 and it ended in a penalty shootout win for Brighton 5-4 and that is England uh, as I said it was a very weird round for England uh, not so much in Spain where a lot happened and nothing really changed uh, in a way I think the only change uh, yeah, we'll, we will see the, the, the changes. Let's go, let's run through the results. Real Sociedad Levante 1-1, Huesca Alaves 1-3, Real Madrid Celta Vigo, we talked about that, 2-0, uh, um, Atletic Bilbao 2-0 against Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid doesn't look all that great as of late. Leganes Girona 0-2. Uh, Eba Real Valladolid 1-2, then Espanyol loses at home to Sevilla 0-1. Uh, Penalty by Ben Yedda. Uh, it is really, I don't get Sevilla. They are up and down, up and down. They're a real ro roller coaster. Uh, Valencia Getafe 0-0. Um, that has some slight imp implication, but that was basically almost the last chance for Valencia to have a shot at the Champions League spots. Uh, Villarreal Rayo 3-1 and then the big game, Betis against Barcelona 1-4, uh, the big Messi show, I shouldn't say the big game, the big Messi show and yeah, if you have seen uh, this game, it's a highlight reel of goals, of great goals and the uh, crazy thing is that arguably the first goal by Messi, the free kick, was probably the worst of the bunch and that's a great goal. So, uh, absolutely uh, ridiculous. Barcelona has a 10 point lead over Atletico Madrid, 66 56. Um, Real Madrid is in third spot. I think those three are pretty safe. Then we have, as for the fourth spot, uh, Getafe still has two points over Alaves, 46 uh, versus 44. Sevilla, um, 43 points in sixth. Could get in there. Valencia, I think, is has a chance for a Europa League spot, but I'm I don't think they will make a top four at 40, 40 points. Uh, same goes for Betis, thirty nine. Uh, Bilbao overtakes Real Sociedad, the eternal rival, um, thirty seven uh, versus thirty six, and then the bottom half of the table. Um, we have Eibar at thirty five, Girona at thirty four. Espanyol 34, so those two flipped. Leganes, and, uh, yeah, those two. Girona overtook um, Espanyol and Leganes. Um, Levante 31. I think this is my, where I think the relegation zone kind of starts. Then the Real Valladolid 29, Villarreal 29, and then there is, uh, is a four points. Celta 25, Rayo 23, Huesca 22. Um, those last three look a little bit shaky, I gotta say. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, especially for Celta, because I really like Celta, but on the other side, I don't see much. Um, uh, Villarreal is improving, and I think uh, Valladolid is a little bit too solid overall in order to get sucked into there. And uh, for me, Valladolid also be long up there. Italy. Uh, there we have many uh, games that we didn't talk about. The, so far, I mean, Cagliari, Fiorentina 2-1, Sassuolo, uh, Sampdoria 3-5, the surprise results, Valve uh, against Roma 2-1, Torino, Bologna 2-3. Uh, those were the Friday and Saturday games. On Sunday, we already talked about Genoa, Juventus 2-0, Atalanta, Chievo 1-1. Uh, that's points dropped for At At Atalanta, so ahead of the derby, that actually made me smile a little bit, because, you know, one more dropping off that could challenge for a fourth spot. Uh, Empoli Frosinone 2-1. That was the game we were talking about, that um, Bologna could have uh, got out of the relegation zone, but Empoli got probably the most um, yeah, 
the opponent that you want to have to uh, to claw yourself back in and you know Empoli had a 2 nil lead at halftime so uh, we knew early how this is gonna go same goes for Lazio against Parma 4-1 where Lazio had a 4 nil lead at halftime and that was the first time I saw Parma's uh, black jerseys which yeah they're interesting but I to be honest I'm not that crazy about them and I'm not sure if I would actually buy such a jersey uh, Napoli Udine 4-2 and then the Milan Derby 3-2 uh, to Inter oh, it was the Milan home game but as I said for me wrong winner uh, but uh, it was a great game absolutely great 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 game it was a big um, advertisement for uh, Serie A uh, if you can get two um, big rivals play such a great game two big teams play such a great game against each other the only downside in uh, beside intervening is intervening uh, those matchup churches which i really dislike but they're miles better than what inter is slated to play next year um, look at my facebook page if you haven't seen those absolutely ugly ugly jersey coming up for inter which yeah i'm honestly very uh Disappointed to see something like that. It's an abomination, frankly. So how does it stand in Italy at the moment? Um, we have the top four remain unchanged. We have Juve 75 far ahead. Napoli is only 15 points, 60. And I think now Napoli now um, has again a certain cushion. Uh, Inter overtakes Milan 53 to 51. It's two points between the two eternal rivals. I'm curious to see whether um, Inter will now finish ahead of Milan or whether in the run in there some, something happens. Because to me, it seemed like clearly, I mean, as I said, Milan didn't play that all, all that great, but Inter clearly put all their eggs in the basket for that one game. Uh, because they have, I have not seen Inter play as convincingly any time in the season so far. So for that reason, uh, I think it might the third spot might still be open. But um, I said it before and I'll say it again, Milan to me is not all that convincing as, as of late. Uh, saying the last three to four games. But yeah, we'll see. Roma, 47 points and then Lazio could actually overtake Roma if they uh, get their game in hand uh, at 45 points and then um, with 48 points they would be within three points of the Champions League spot so very much open and Lazio still has uh, two games at the San Siro against Milan uh, that one in the cup and one in the league that actually could prove huge for them Atalanta 45 I I almost want to call them out of the race, but you know, um, you the seventh spot will still be an Europa League spot um, unless the cup winner, which could also be Fiorentina, but I think Atalanta will go on there. Uh, but if Fiorentina wins it, then um, they might make it. But if the cup winner is also in the uh, top six or top seven, then of course it's an Europa League spot. Uh, Torino 44. Um, I think Torino is dropping out of it, Sampdoria 42 and Fiorentina 30, 37. I think, to be honest, I don't think any of this is gonna end up in Europe, although they could catch Atalanta, but Atalanta has the cup competition in hand. Um, bottom half, I think when we look at it, the next three teams are kind of safe. They are nowhere, there are teams that are going nowhere. Parma 33, Genoa 33, Sassuolo 30, Genoa of course overtaking Sassuolo. Um, I would even say Cagliari looks now okay with 30 points. Spalo takes Udinese. Uh, Udinese has a game in hand, but that's exactly the game against Lazio that I've been talking about. Um, so Spalo 26, Udine 25, Empoli 25, Bologna 24. So Empoli, Bologna, Udine and Spalo, I think, are for the last relegation spot. Uh, and then Frozen number 17, Kevo 11. It's going to be... Those two are out of it. But I think there's still a lot to play for in Italy. Um, let's quickly go to League 1 uh, before we look at some two other leagues. 
we have Nice Toulouse 1 1, Lille Monaco 0 1, Angers Amiens 0 0, Caen Saint Etienne 0 5, Guingamp Dijon 1 0, Nîmes Strasbourg 2 2. Mm. Uh, Lyon Montpellier 3 2, Reims Nantes 1 0, Bordeaux Rennes 1 1. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain must say 3 1, so PSG is 77 points. Do we need to talk about it anymore? Lille is not dropping off, but it's still ahead of Lyon uh, 57, uh, Lille 53, Lyon, uh, Marseille 47, Saint Etienne overtakes Reims 46, both of them, Montpellier 42, Rennes 41, Nice 41. I think, yeah, I would say all these have still a chance for an Europa League spot. Uh, Strasbourg, I think, is out of it at 39. And then, uh, bottom half, Nîmes 37, Angers 36, Bordeaux 34, uh, Toulouse 32. Maybe the relegation zone starts at Nantes 31, Monaco 30, but, uh, but honestly, Amiens 29, there's still a lot of distance because Guingamp 22, Dijon 21, Caen 20, those three, even if Guingamp now moves out of last spot, those three are pretty solid. Um, few results from other leagues, namely in the Netherlands and in Portugal. In the Netherlands, I think we got a um, pretty decider. Um, because the big two actually lost Feyenoord, loses home to Tilburg, Willem 2-3, uh, two, and Ajax loses uh, away to Alkmaar 1-0, and PSV uh, wins at Venlo 1-0. So we have at the top now, uh, Ajax won during during the week, but now lost. So on the top of the uh, league, PSV has a five-point lead over Ajax. Uh, Feyenoord and Alkmaar uh, in third and fourth with 47 points. So that's pretty much uh, a, a two-horse race. And now I think PSV will actually win this one. And let's look at Portugal, where there the exact opposite happens. The big three all winning Sporting against Santa Clara 1-0, Porto 3-0 against Maritimo, and uh, Benfica 4-0 and Moria Rense, meaning that Benfica and Porto still level on points. Benfica holds the lead um, thanks to superior goal differential. Uh, Sporting Braga is actually uh, now in third with 58. They may get in there, but I don't think so. And Sporting 55 rounds of the top four. Well, we are ready for international break. We know where things are and we'll pick it right up. I'll probably make soon a video of what games I'm looking forward to during the international break. Let me know what you think, how the leagues are going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.